If you're a college basketball nerd like me and enjoy looking at analytics sites like Ken Palm and Bart Torvik, you've probably seen the usual and expected suspects at the top of the rankings. There's Houston, Tennessee, UCLA, Alabama, Purdue, St. Mary's, wait, St. Mary's? I'm pretty sure a lot of us, including myself, had that same reaction one day when scrolling through these sites, and I think it was a fair one to have. Here was the team of this small private school in California, who earlier in the season had lost games to New Mexico, Washington, and Colorado State, but somehow the metrics still love them and their unique style of play. St. Mary's is anything but flashy, yet for longtime head coach Randy Bennett, who's been there since 2001, it works. And now, with their most recent win over Gonzaga, the Gales are sitting at 21-4 with a WCC record of 10-0, and they are looking more and more like a team worthy of getting a protected seed in the NCAA tournament. So let's get to know the Gales and see what this team has to offer. Welcome to Gales Gone Wild. It's no secret that St. Mary's has been one of the more consistent mid-major programs in the country over the last 20 years. Since Bennett took over in 2001, the Gales have been to eight NCAA tournaments, with five of those appearances being at-large bids, and they've gotten past the first round three different times, with a Sweet 16 appearance coming in 2010 when the Gales featured a young Matthew Della Vadova on the roster. Despite all their success, though, the current version of St. Mary's might be the most promising. As the Gales possess the top five defense in the country per Bar Torvik, they play a draining style that mentally wears down opponents, and they have a roster are filled with experienced players who know their roles. All in all, the more you look at St. Mary's, the more those lofty analytical rankings seem to make sense. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that St. Mary's plays the most exciting brand of basketball you've ever seen, but the Gales are interesting to watch in their own way. They're one of the slowest playing teams in the country, as their 62 possessions per game ranks 355th out of 363 Division I teams, and they have the ability to grind a game to a halt whenever they really want to. And yes, this style can get monotonous and boring, but that's exactly what St. Mary's wants you to think. Because they are so deliberate and take so long on offense, the defense is more likely to make a mistake, and this is how St. Mary's punishes opponents. And don't confuse low scoring and slow pace for inefficient offense either, because the Gales currently have a top 40 offense in the country, as they hit 36% of their threes as a team, don't turn the ball over, and they grab a fair amount of offensive rebounds. The Gales aren't bad, they're just different. No, I, you're different because you're better. How are they better? No, look, you're you're both better different in a different but better way. Although their offense is certainly passable though, St. Mary's signs primarily for their defense. The Gales are solid all around the floor as they are relentless in screen navigation, great in help situations, and also incredibly long in the front court with Alex Dukas, Kyle Bowen, and Mitchell Saxon all possessing long wingspans. While St. Mary's forces turnovers at a decent rate of around 20% of their defensive possessions, their main skill is really just forcing misses and closing possessions. Because St. Mary's is so disciplined on defense, opponents have an average effective field goal percentage of 44.9%, which is the 11th lowest number in the country, and this is also bolstered by St. Mary's defensive rebounding rate of close to 80% which is second best in the country. St. Mary's' offense already does a great job at limiting possessions and shot attempts over the course of a game, and when combined with their brilliance at not allowing second chance points, it becomes very difficult to get into a rhythm against the Gales. Per college basketball reference, opponents of St. Mary's only attempt 51.6 shots per game, which is the 12th fewest in America, and when the Gales only allow teams to shoot 40% from the field as it is, they become an insanely hard team to score against. When you look at the roster of St. Mary's, you'll notice a lot of experienced players, but it's actually a freshman who's leading this team to potentially the best season in school history. And if you didn't catch the last 10 minutes of their recent game against Gonzaga, let me introduce you to... Here he goes again, Hayden Mahaney! Incredible. Mahaney is the lone freshman who gets significant minutes for St. Mary's, and he's become the Gales' most important offensive weapon. The 6'3 guard is the team's leading scorer as he's averaging 15 points a game, and he's also been the go-to guy in clutch situations, as evidenced by the aforementioned Gonzaga game and the BYU game in which he hit the game-winning shot with under a second left. He's shooting 46% from the field and 41% from three, and he's emerged as one of the most effective freshmen in the entire country. Mahaney has a swagger and confidence about him that few players of his experience have, and Randy Bennett has allowed him to do his thing, as he leads a team in field goal attempts per game, despite not breaking into the starting lineup until early December. Mahaney is a crafty ball handler and finisher who uses change of pace extremely well to break down defenders and get to the rim. While his at-the-rim numbers are pretty average compared to the rest of Division I, he still has unbelievable touch around the basket. Watch here how he uses his change of pace to get to the rim where he finishes with a beautiful left-handed layup. 
Mahaney is also a sound jump shooter who is capable of getting his own shot at pretty much any time. In fact, the freshman is shooting 43% from mid-range this season, and perhaps even more impressive, none of these makes have been assisted this year, thus showcasing his elite self-creation value. Mahaney's high-level three-point shooting makes him a complete three-level scorer, and he's the type of guard that can absolutely thrive in the NCAA tournament. Alongside Mahaney in the backcourt, you have longtime St. Mary's staple Logan Johnson, who averages a little over 12 points per game for the Gales. After transferring from Cincinnati after one season under Mick Cronin, Johnson decided to head to Moraga where he's now in his fourth season as a Gale. While he certainly has his limitations offensively as he's only shooting 26% from three this year, he's a very powerful athlete who can attack driving lanes with aggression and speed. And while he's not a particularly good finisher from any area of the floor, his 3.7 assists per game leads the team, and he's very good at creating advantages for teammates using his physical gifts. Like here where he gets downhill and elevates before picking out an easy pass for a layup. Johnson's also a very intense defender who fights hard around screens, and he isn't afraid to battle on the boards either, as he's averaging close to 5 rebounds per game. In addition to his hustle, Johnson also snatches little over a steal and a half per game, as he has extremely quick hands on the defensive end. Watch here how he just starts in and takes the ball away from New Mexico's Jamal Mashburn Jr. 6'6 small forward Alex Dukas is also in his fourth year at St. Mary's, and the senior has shown steady improvement throughout his career as a Gale as he's gone from averaging 15 minutes and 4 points a game as a freshman, to now averaging 30 minutes and 12 points a game as a senior. Dukas helps St. Mary's defensively thanks to his length, and he's able to stop drivers in their tracks and contain the ball extremely well. He's also become a lethal 3-point shooter, as he's knocking down around 43% from distance on 6 attempts per game. Most of these are catch and shoot opportunities, which blends well with the advantage creation skills of Mahaney and Johnson, as Dukas always seems to be the guy that makes defenses pay. St. Mary's starting center is 6'10 junior Mitchell Saxon, and he's the anchor of the Gales' suffocating defense, as he's blocking 1.5 shots per game in addition to grabbing a steal a game as well. Saxon is incredibly gifted as a ball screen defender, as he can hedge and recover as well as anybody in the country. Watch here how Saxon will play at the level of the screen and then recover all the way back to the basket where he blocks a layup attempt from San Diego State. This type of mobility makes it difficult for opposing offenses to find gaps in St. Mary's defense, thus leading to fewer scoring opportunities. Offensively, Saxon's production has also increased dramatically, as he's scoring 12.6 points per game on 55% shooting, and he's grabbing 3 offensive rebounds per game as well. He does most of his damage around the rim, but he's proven to be a capable finisher given his total lack of offensive production last year. Speaking of a lack of offensive production, St. Mary's' fifth starter is 6'8", Kyle Bowen. And despite only averaging 5.7 points per game, Bowen might be one of St. Mary's most valuable players. His 7.8 rebounds per game is second on the team behind Saxon, and together they help the Gales close possessions and limit offensive opportunities, and he's also averaging 2.3 stocks per game as well. Bowen's defensive box plus minus of 5.0 is the best on the team in 12th overall nationally, and again, he's just one of these solid defenders who doesn't make mistakes and contains the ball extremely well. Off the bench is sixth man Augustus Marcelonis, who is one of the team's better passers and can run the point when Mahaney or Johnson need a break. But other than him, this is a very top-heavy Gales roster. And while guys like Luke Barrett and Harry Wessels will get spot minutes each night, this team is driven by a starting five, as they make up 78% of the team's total minutes this year. Now, we've spent time explaining why St. Mary's' style of play is so effective, but I'd be remiss to not mention the concerns of playing this way as well. Because of their slow pace, St. Mary's naturally has less of a margin for error when it comes to games. If you think about it, the less possessions featured in a game, the more likely it becomes that the inferior team can get lucky and win. Typically, playing slow is a method used by worse teams to try and prevent the game from getting out of hand, and St. Mary's is used to playing the role of an underdog, especially in bigger games. But all of a sudden, the Gales are a legitimately good team, and if you look at their metrics, they should be expected to win most of the games they play. But what happens when you take a style used by underdogs and apply it to a nationally elite team? Well, you can get games like Virginia's 2018 loss to UMBC in the NCAA tournament, where the game was slowed down to a point where the Cavaliers simply didn't have enough possessions to mount a shred of a comeback after a slow start. It's this type of game that should worry St. Mary's. Yeah, they can control the game with their pace, but they do open themselves up to potential upsets as a result of it as well. That being said though, the Gales are tough, experienced, and talented. And when you add a freshman like Mahaney into the mix of a team that was already very good last year, it's easy to see why St. Mary should have a deep tournament run in their sights come March. And either way, it's safe to say that this has been one of St. Mary's best seasons ever. And given that, the Gales have certainly earned every right to go wild. Thanks so much for watching, and give me your thoughts below.